So today we find ourselves in Milton Keynes, the centre, the centre of British badminton. And here we are with uh, the old man, Not the, old man. Yep. the old man of British badminton, Mr Nathan Robertson, of course Olympic silver medalist with uh, his former partner in crime, Gail Ems, a world champion, Commonwealth gold medalist, the lot. He's been there, he's done it. Um, and uh, Nathan, it's a Monday morning, you're a bit jet lagged, aren't you? Just come back from Korea, but um, such are the tribulations and trials of an international sportsman. Yeah, I only got back last Thursday night, Friday morning, so jet lag always lasts three or four days. Um, but we're back in training today because we've got English nationals this weekend up in Manchester. So uh, good one for a lot of the people in England to come and watch the, all the best players in the UK. And even better, we've got the World Championships in the summer in this country. Yeah, we've got the World Championships coming back to London um, for the first time for many years. I mean, I've, I've never even played an international event in London, which is incredible to say I've been full-time now for 16 years. So uh, it's an exciting place. It's almost coming home as uh, the All England Championships used to be in London in Wembley Arena. So uh, it's sort of a great historical venue and I'm, I can't wait to play there in the summer. Now, of course, uh, it's also Wembley Arena going to be the venue, is it not, uh, at the 2012 Olympics? So it's, I mean, it's a major, major tournament in its own right, the Worlds, but it's also sort of the test. Yeah, it certainly is. It's, the, it's totally the dry run for the Olympics. It'll be the same venue. Uh, it'll be, you know, it'll be dressed slightly differently, of course, for the Games. Um, but the players will definitely get a feel this year of what it'll be like to compete in the same venue in 2012. And hopefully it'll give that an extra incentive, especially for the British players during the qualifying period. Well, I mean, we're all going to get right behind badminton. It's funny, actually, when you and Gail won the silver in, in Athens, the, the whole of Britain stopped and became badminton experts. Maybe not permanently, but at least for a while. They all stopped to watch you in the final. So hopefully it will happen again this year and definitely next year at the Olympics. Certainly, that's what we want. Uh, you know, with all the sort of smaller sports, especially like badminton, you know, we get one chance every four years to put ourselves in the limelight. Myself and Gail grabbed that chance. Uh, in 2004 and we certainly want a repeat performance uh, hopefully by myself again and if it's not myself then one of the younger players will step up and onto that podium in 2012. Well you've, you've got rid of a, a short blonde and replaced her with a tall brunette. I have, yeah. Please explain. Uh, upgraded after 2008, Gail hates that uh, saying but um, yeah I got myself a young partner in Jenny Warwick. Um, she's a developing player, 24, so she's still got lots of improving to do before 2012 games. Uh, we're already in the top 10 in the world though, which for her is a fantastic achievement and we're still trying to build on that and get ourselves established within the top 8. Um, qualification is top 13 pairs, so you know we're looking good for that and hopefully we can do the business in a year and a half's time. Okay, the first shot we're going to do today is the serve. We'll start every rally with a serve, so it's the most important shot and we practice it all the time. In doubles, we do a backhand serve, so it's really simple, very short, short action, and the aim is that it skims the net and lands just over the front service line. So we have a nice steady base, shuttling front of the racket, pushing it over. So it's very simple, normally not a lot should go wrong with it. If we start with a good short serve, then we can get the attack early and it's the best way to start the rally. Now Gail's done a decent thing, she's retired. She's uh, turned into a bit of a TV personality, which I suspect she always wanted to do. Probably desperately, yeah. And, uh, and she's just managed to climb Kilimanjaro as well. You sold you on. Yeah, of course, still going. I mean, the dream of 2012, it's, I think any athlete, they want to be in a home Olympics. For me, I'm still loving the sport. I enjoy the training. Maybe not as many long hours as I used to, but certainly, and I really still enjoy the competing and hate losing as much as when I first turned professional when I was 16, 17. So, um, but 2012 will be my last competition, so, but I want to go out on a high there. If the Olympics had been anywhere else but London, would you still be carrying on, do you think? Uh, I'm not sure. I certainly wanted to go to the Commonwealth Games in Delhi. I uh, had a great time there and had the honour of carrying the, carrying the flag and leading the team into the opening ceremony. Um, but I'm not sure. I'm still enjoying it. I'm still in the top ten in the world, so um, and it's still probably the best job I'll ever have, so I probably would be. I was going to say that, actually, Nathan. I mean, how, uh, how prestigious and what an honour it must have been for you to, to walk proudly at the front of your uh, your country, all your teammates, holding that flag, yeah. walking around the stadium in Delhi. It was, I mean, being told that it was going to happen was extremely special off my coach and then... I Did think you believe him? Did you think it was a wind-up? No, I was, I was hopeful that it might possibly happen, but of course you never know because there's so many strong candidates and you're in a team of five, six hundred, so... Um, but it was special, it was certainly when I retired 
be in the top three memories of my entire career. Really? Yeah, certainly. What, what are the other two? I think winning the World Championships and getting Olympic silver medal. No, 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 wrong, wrong answer. Your, your highest memory will be winning the gold medal at the London 2012 Olympics. Yeah, that will be, or it's still yet to happen. So, next shot we're going to do is a smash. It's often the, the shot that most players like to play the most. It's the one that wins the end of the rallies normally. So, feed is going to feed one nice and high. You're going to reach up. You hit the smash almost with a straight arm and straight racket to get the most leverage and the most power. So, quick example. Not too far back. Here we go. When you look back at that silver medal, which of course really brought you and, uh, and Gail a lot of sporting fame in the country, do you look back with fond memories or slight angst that uh, you got so close? We often get asked this and we always have great memories. Uh, we didn't go into the games as favourites for a gold, which then would have been disappointing. We were, you know, we were one of the best four players in the world and we, we played great during the tournament. We, we came close to the gold but didn't quite get it. But also, you know, we could have lost first, second round, so it's just what happens on the day. We lost to a better pair, but we were still the second best pair on the planet during those games. Now, when you're in a mixed doubles partnership, which is probably where you've had most of your, 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 yeah. most of your success anyway, what, what are the mechanics of it? Because it's not just um, on court, is it? It's probably also having to deal with each other's intensity, each other's moods. Um, what was it like with, with Gail? What was it like with Jane? And what was it like for them having to deal with you? It's probably very interesting, I think, from the outside. It's like a, it is like a relationship because you deal with the mood swings, you deal with the ups and downs in training, competition, certainly a lot of travelling, staying in hotels. Um, and you obviously, I think it actually helps you get to know women, actually, when you play in a mixed doubles combination. So Gail is always feisty on court and a bit bubbly off court. And Jenny's quite similar as well. So actually, they've got quite similar attributes. They'll probably say that I was a bit moody when I was younger. Um, but a, a quite relaxed, easygoing guy nowadays. Following on from the smash, there's also a disguised drop shot, which is exactly the same technique, apart from at the very last second you take all the pace out of the racket, so the shuttle just drops over the net, disguising and hopefully fooling your opponent. So it should be something like this. Hopefully it'll throw your opponents off balance a little bit and it's also a way of winning the rallies without having to point to each other. Any idea what you're going to do after London? Uh, I'm, I'm sure I'll stay involved with the sport, promoting it, etc. Coaching um, maybe as well? Uh, well, no, I do a little bit of coaching with Gail anyway in a badminton right. masterclass oh, around do you? the country. Yeah, oh, so. the old partnership's not no, quite we're finished. certainly not finished and she's such a great person that I always wanted to continue work, working with her when she retired anyway. And uh, the same with a lot of people I've met through the sport. That I'll certainly keep in touch and work with them in business as well in the future. Now she's very proud of the fact that she's just climbed Kilimanjaro uh, on the same climb that uh, Martina Navratilova, of yeah. all people, um, had to go down the mountain with mountain sickness. So she's very, very proud. But I hear that you like to um, burst her balloon. No, I, of course I'll make fun of it, told she climbed a little hill, etc. But I know it was a, a great achievement for her. We've done lots of charity work in the past together, so... Uh, I'll tell you what, I bet that really winds her up. <laughs> no, it, of course it does, but uh, she did great. I know I uh, supported her with a little bit of a contribution to the charity, so it was all good. Fantastic. All right, Nathan, well, lovely to meet you today. Uh, best of luck uh, this week, particularly in the summer of the world. Thank you. And especially next year at London. I bet you can't wait for the Olympics in your own country in front of your own crowd to start. Fingers crossed everything goes well in the preparation. You know, we take a good strong squad there and you know, like you say, you get one chance every four years to do the business so it's time to grab what's there.